Thank you, thank you. Hi, Robin, how Hi. are you? Hey, everyone. <laughs> All right, so. I'm so excited a little bit. I didn't know. Seeing that we were going to do the second line. Are we going to do the second line? Right. We were going to do the second line. So you always participated in the Food and Wine Festival at Disney yes. California yes. Adventure. Today you prepared for us a mimosa bar. Talk we to have us a about that. We mimosa bar over there. Okay, I want to tell like a quick little story though, because this is very much like a full circle moment for me. Let's do it. So me and my sister have been in the wine business for 17 years now. You guys, the story is amazing, by the way. We're going to make a movie. Are you really? Yes. Oh, you know what's going on here. In a word of words. But we've been in the business for a long time. At Essence Festival in 2018, we debuted Black Door Magic Wines in the opening night at the Mayor's Ball for Essence Festival. Yeah. Um, and we kind of thought that we were gonna make it as like a commemorative for that year, for our first time participating in Essence Festival. Um, and I'm just excited that we're here now at Black Door Magic Wines has become our best-selling wines by far. Wow. So thank you all who, who love and drink Black Door Magic Wines. And then to be here today with this beautiful mimosa bar, with our friends at Disney, who it just feels like it's very full circle. So thank you. Yes, well thank you for coming. We're really excited about everything else that you guys have to offer. Thank and you. we'll be sampling around. All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Robin. How are you doing? How are y'all doing? Okay, well, we know that you all are now a part of the Disney Music Group. You just launched into with the family of collaborators. You and Natalie Prosper have a new label within the Disney family. How does it feel about writing to be a part of this? Uh, it's surreal, to be honest. Um, I didn't expect um, to get this far in my career. You know, I just love doing music, and, you know, that's, that's all we care about. But to have this kind of, you know, ability to have a label and, you know, kind of do it in this way. Is like, yes! Yeah, you know? <laughs> That's amazing. You're going to be able to spearhead a lot of big yeah. projects through that. Now, you guys at Parker Landscape, Disney Music Group, you named the company Good Company. The label is Good Company. Where did that come from? Okay. Um, we just wanted to, to create an atmosphere of just how we always hang out together. Um, and it, it all would just feel like we were a good company. And we would have just expand that to artists and different creators to just create an environment where you can just hang and have fun and do love to music. So we need to try to get a company. Well, we can't wait. You guys are into company today, right? Give them a round of applause for your deal. And we'll be hearing more from the music from you all as well. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats again on your success, fellas. All right, guys. Representation matter in the real world, and of course in fantasies like Aladdin. What does representation mean to you? Oh gosh, representation to me it means so much. I think one of the biggest things it means is freedom on so many levels, right? There's a, there's a freedom of representation. I will never forget when I was a little chubby chocolate boy growing up in Orlando, Florida. My son, come on, Orlando! Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> I saw my very first Broadway show. It happened to be a Disney on Broadway show, Beauty and the Beast. And in the ensemble was this little black man, and he was a spoon in uh, during during Be Our Guest, Be Our Guest. And I looked at that man in the in the ensemble, and I was like, I could be the spoon. Like this is it. Cut to years later, I'm playing the genie in Aladdin on Broadway. This representation of why it matters and why it, it is so so important. So that 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 would be my answer. <laughs> and a similar question for you. Why do you think that Maxine resonated with so many people and still continues to resonate now in terms of representation? Well, first I have to say thank you to everyone who's ever supported me. Inside of that role, I found that um, the way I looked represented a lot of the young women or the way they wanted to see themselves in the world. Right. And their aspirations. Obviously, I was not a lawyer. I had not even gone to college, but there I was playing. And I got a chance for all the people who had instructed me, whether they were instructors in school, educational, uh, people that I admired, Ruby Goldberg, you see that style? That's Ruby. I just done a movie with her. Uh, uh, Seth Tyson was the person who said, don't ever let anybody tell you to put your hair. So I had the confidence to walk on that set. He had legends right there. That's right. They were instructing me, pouring into me. But they were born into me like other people. Their family, their fathers, their mothers, and all of that. And that's represented. 
you're not just representing yourself, you're representing all the DNA within you and within your mind. It's very powerful. It's like conjuring something from far like, away, somewhere, in someone's womb, and inside of their spell, they made you, and you are the manifestation of that. Yeah. So please, walk forward with that and know that imagination is the biggest nation in the world, and what you create is important. So, own your origin story, and that's part of Max's origin story. <laughs> I love that. All right, so here at Essence Fest, you know the brands across the Disney Company are celebrating the power of joy. Of course, black culture, black stories. And a final question for you both. Michael, as you see and think about the power of joy, what are the stories you want to tell and, and see in live entertainment? Well, you know, it is amazing getting to play a character who is full of love, light, and laughter. Uh, to see a black man smile in an ad, and, and to see what that looks like as opposed to some of the other images maybe that we've seen. To me, there is power, of course, and struggle in all of, all of that, and we have seen uh, those films, we've seen the TV shows with that. I, I am very excited about what happens when we just see a person and we see yeah. what they what what is what what's also after the struggle. We know well here, you know, of course we can feel what they what they experience, but what is the after? Can we celebrate the joy? Can we see the joy? Can we actually it just happens to be that they are black, you know, and it just happens to be that they are of color. That to me is an exciting place that I, I'm I'm really excited to sort of uh, to really be a part of that change and to be a part of those stories that really say I'm here. Yes, there may there is struggle, and I am literally the living <laughs> example of, uh, of the dream for my ancestors. But I am living, and I'm here. And so, let me live in the joy and show it. Why not? And not be afraid of it. Be unapologetically joyful. Be unapologetically in your skin. And what that is on screen, on stage. That to me is the is what I'm excited about to be able to be a part of. And that's Power of joy. Yeah. Now, Erica, what stories would you like to see and uh, be a part of in entertainment media? Um, there are so many untold stories that I can't. I mean, I'd love to be in science fiction, all these other wonderful things, and the genre of that shows. Um, I have fun watching other people do their shows and uh, create. Um, you know, that chick Angel is right next to me. She and her husband Marcus are fantastic. I watch them and um, look at their relationship and the way they menace their children with all their antics and adventures and think that's a story that I would like to see told and, and their continuation of how they're building that and also building with other influencers. They do it very well and I have to mark you and say thank you so much for showing this example of cross-contaminating between uh, different uh, 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 influencer and uh, those types of channels. I'd love to see their stories told. I'd love, love to see um, more stories where we come together and we start to create and collaborate between each other. Yes. That's between genders, race, um, all these things, um, age, all these things, because uh, we should start to think of our stories as archiving our families as well. We don't just have to think, oh, how do I create and write? Because sometimes you may realize as a creator, you might be better at other things, but there's always a story told. We should figure out a way to be a part of the story. But first, look very close to yourself, because your aunties, your aunts, your grandpas, your, your uh, uncles, they have stories. So I'd love to see that. Just so you know, that's an example of organic sustainability. It's telling your own story, and it's your origin story, and I'd like to see those. In the meantime, I can tell them, think of me, and you can put me in more. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we look forward to hearing those stories and seeing those stories. Thank you all both for stopping by, brunch, and all that's next. Give her a round of applause. Thank you. All right, Sybil and Savon. Sybil, you mentioned earlier celebrating soulfully. Can you share more insight into that? Absolutely. So Celebrate Soulfully is a, a celebration of black joy, is a celebration of our stories, black heritage, black culture. And to be honest, I stole it from Savon uh, at Walt Disney World. It started there. Uh, she curated it with a great team from Yellow Shoes and created this product so it could represent us, reflect our culture, reflect what we do with the yard. It's a great product that really is about our music, 
it's about product that really expresses who we are, what you like and want to see in the parks and theme parks. So, so want anything to build there? You know what, first of all, I'm just going to say thanks, sis, because <laughs> <laughs> that's a compliment, um, but it also comes from support. Um, having, seeing yourself and seeing yourself in, in a twin, <laughs> civil, um, has just been a great blessing. So I think that's also what the foundation of how far it's and can you give us some examples of what we see when we're celebrating soulfully throughout the parks? You know, it's uh, a couple of things. For me at Disneyland, uh, it lives on all throughout the year in Lincoln Theater. Um, for example, we worked with National Geographic to change the expression of how we told the story of Lincoln and the enslaved people and our freedom. Um, it wasn't just about Lincoln fr uh, freeing the slaves because we didn't. Right? It was about Frederick Douglass, right? Frederick Douglass really worked to convince him of our need for freedom. Um, so National Geographic um, really expressed that story in the way that it should have been told in the first place. And so that was really important to us. Also, the tale of the Lion King. So talk about a great story told from the perspective of Simba. So that's another great way that we bring it to life uh, with continuity. We also uh, think about key beings like Black Music Month. So we celebrate soulfully during that time period. We celebrate all year long because we, because we exist as a people all year long. Absolutely. And that's really important for us. And so how do you guys celebrate? Well, you know, we celebrate soulfully every day. Uh, and what I'm proud of is over the last four years, as we're going into our fourth year now, we're doing treatment like, consistently growing, learning from one another, figuring out new stories to tell because the numbers of stories that we have to tell are just unlimited. And so whether we're talking about it from art, we're talking about it from a perspective of food and music, it's all about a reflection of joy. So those experiences include things like at Disney Springs, our art walk, celebrating the great black artists. It's Motown Mondays at Disney Springs, bringing the music, bringing the energy in the right places. It's also celebrating great black talent in all of the other ways that oftentimes we don't know about, but they're always there. Like our black chefs, um, thinking about our efforts in cooking with soul, how you find out about all of the amazing offerings of Walt Disney World property that are made up authentically by our black chefs and great talent. It's all of those things and so much more. If you love a good festival, Epcot Festival International is just filled with all of these joys and the things that just fill your soul and fill your own. I can't wait. Are y'all ready to go? I'm ready. Yeah. I mean, you can't know we have still have things to do. All right, so Sybil, how have you, as a black executive, been able to use your seat at the table? Because, of course, of course we've been talking about representation, right? This is the epitome of what we've been talking about. This is right here in the manifestation of it. Tell us about how you've been able to use that influence. Yeah, it's about bringing other black creators, other black leaders into the company. It's about making sure that they have their voice uh, and that their voice is needed. Uh, it's about making sure that we have diverse perspectives and representing brown people, uh, the LGBTQIA uh, plus community, making sure that their voice is at the table. Um, it's ensuring that the product reflects people that aren't at the table for themselves. Um, that's incredibly important to me. Uh, I've been coming to the park since I was a kid, but I haven't always seen our product reflect who we are. And so, you know, whether someone wants to hear it or not, it's about them getting that stuff. No matter what. <laughs> 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 so, you know, when you go to the park, you want to bring the families, you want them to have a great time. It's all about summertime right now, families are vacationing. Salon, what do you want the black families to experience at the theme parks? Well, you know, Deja, you and I were talking a couple of days ago, and I shared with you one of my personal favorites by the accomplice of Maya Angelou. And it ends in people will always remember how you made them. And so when I think about how I want black families to feel when they come into our parks, I want them to feel like they belong. I want them to feel the genuine commitment to celebrating black culture and feeling like they were welcomed and that they were intentionally invited. And so that's part of our goal. Um, and so really that's what I look forward to and that's what I like to see when we're out with them in the, in the parks. But it goes beyond that into the community as well. Um, we have a program that we've instituted back in 2008. It's called Disney Dreamers Academy. Yes. It's so, yes. And, and, and so many people around this room, too many to thank uh, individually, have been part of the legacy, including Ms. Crum here, uh, in terms of bringing light and life to this program, so, for which we're very proud to share, uh, has brought 1,600 young people, young talent, black talent, um, into the funnel in terms of mentorship. Uh, teaching, engagement, 
fostering and nurturing their career dreams. And it goes beyond just those students. It includes their parents, their families, and their guardians who are part of that as well. So double, triple that impact in terms of um, that, that, that uh, concentric circles, if you will, of engagement. I'm really proud to bring that forward, and as I think about the community, we have more to share on that. So I'm going to stop there because we actually at 110 this afternoon are going to be sharing some announcements about Disney Dreamers Academy 2024, 17th year running. Wow! We look forward to seeing you all on the next stage, so hopefully join in in that celebration and joy. We look forward to hearing from more. I've been there at the Disney Dreamers Academy like broadcast before. It is fascinating. It is amazing to see these young people be inspired, and they're just all awestruck by everything that you all are providing as well. So we can't wait to hear from more, and thank you for stopping back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.